Welcome to Lesson 2, Model Tax Schedules Using Piecewise Functions. Our objectives are to write piecewise functions to model tax structures. We're going to be looking at both state and federal tax structures. Here's a chart showing the top income tax rates from 1913 to 2010. You can see that we're here around 35%, and actually we're a little higher right now in 2013. But if you'll notice, back in 1945 and 19. 60, we were up at 94 and 91 percent. Even as um, early as 1970, we were at 72 percent. So while 35 or 39 percent may seem relatively high, compared to what it has been historically, it's not too bad. So think of it, remember what that means. Marginal tax rate just means the top income tax bracket. So that means that not all income earned is taxed at these high rates only amounts over a certain threshold. Let's look at some different state rates. Here's Colorado. Colorado just has a flat tax of 4.63%. In the prior year, 2013, there was a bill put out to try to change that to become more of a graduated tax structure like the federal tax structure, but that failed. Let's look at Nebraska's tax rate they have four different intervals, and um, if you'll notice, their highest tax bracket is 6.84%, but some of the income is taxed as low as 2.46%. Here's California right here, and California has quite a lot of tax brackets, in fact, more than the federal government. And you'll notice their highest tax bracket is as high as 12.3, but their lowest is down to 1%. And then on the other side of the United States, we have New York. New York ranges from 2.9% to 3.8, so not a big range. And they have about five brackets here. So each state has their own tax bracket. Let's go ahead and look at some of the states in general. This is a table that can be very handy, especially if you plan to move to one of these states. There are some states, like Alaska right here, which has no state tax. Um, and you can see that Florida, also has no state tax or Nevada. New Hampshire only taxes your dividends and interest. And if we keep going down, Washington, South Dakota, uh, Wyoming, none of those states have state taxes. And then we have the tax rate range from low to high. And so you can see that Hawaii is pretty high along with California. And then we have some lower states down here like North Dakota, which is only about 3.2%. Let's go ahead and practice writing models. Let's start with Colorado. Colorado has that flat, flat tax that I was talking about, so the model will be relatively easy to write because it's just going to be one linear equation. So the total tax that we're going to have to pay, we'll call that y, is going to be equal to our rate written as a decimal, 0 0.0463 times the amount of our taxable income, which we'll call x. This is all we need to calculate our tax in Colorado. So no matter who you are, you just take your taxable income and tax it by about 4.5%. Let's see how much tax we would owe if our taxable income was 31500 in order to calculate that, we would take the 0 .0463 and we would substitute in the 31,500 and put that in our calculator. In the state of Colorado, if we made that much money, the amount of tax that we would have to pay would be $1,458.45. Now you'll see here in the next few weeks that this taxable income of 31500 is not necessarily what you made because what you made, your gross income, is allowed to have some deductions and things taken off of it to come to your taxable income. So we'll talk about that in the weeks to come. All right, now let's look at the federal tax structure and see how much we would owe on the same income for federal tax purposes. And then when we're done, we're going to calculate our effective rate. So what we want to do in this situation is write a piecewise model. That's the best way to represent these different domains. Our equations are going to be different depending upon where our income lies. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started off, and then we'll just record the rest of those.
Okay, if you remember that in a piecewise function, we start off with our equation from our first scenario. And the equation is going to be 10% of the amount over zero. Well, that just means we are going to have to pay 10% of our income. And then we'll create a range here that represents our domain. So we'll pay 10% of our income only if x, which represents our income, is between zero, right here, and 8,925, right here. So I'm gonna put zero here and 89.25 here. Now we just need to come up with some inequality signs. And if you remember last lesson, you began practicing with this. The key is what it says up here. If taxable income is over, so it has to be over, not equal to, that would be greater than, but not over. So it has to be less than, but it could be equal to this amount. Once we know our signs, this is going to stay the same way all the way down. So let's create one more of these equations for our piecewise function. The next equation says that our tax is going to be 892.50. So I would write 892.50. I'm going to have to pay that. That represents the tax from the first bracket. Plus, I'm going to have to pay a percent. It looks like 15%. And I would write that as a decimal times the amount of my income, x, over 89.25. So I would subtract 89.25. The 89.25 is already taxed in this first bracket, and that's where the 892.50 comes from. So here's my second equation. And now I can create my second domain. So I, again, I'm going to have x in the middle. I know this is going to be less than, and this is going to be less than or equal to. And then I can just pick up the next interval, which is 89.26, one more than my prior interval, up to 36,250 here. And I can just continue writing on and on until I've written a piecewise function to represent every single one of these intervals. Here's one more part of my piecewise equation that I've gone ahead and added, and that's this next one. So the tax is 4991.25 right here, plus 25% right here, of the amount over 36. 250, which is right here. So my income minus 36,250 will be taxed at 25% plus the 499125, which represents the tax from the prior two brackets of income. And I would just continue and continue until I got down to the very end. And notice that my domain here just shows the 36,251 and the 87,850 on each side. And as long as I have the right signs, that'll work. Okay, this is enough though to calculate my tax for this income. If my income is 31,500, let's look at my domains here. Where is that going to fall into? Well, not the first one. How about the second one between 8926 and 36,250? So this is going to be the equation that I use to calculate my tax. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll take the 892.50, and then we'll add to that 15% of my income, which was 31,500, minus 89.25. Using my calculator, I'm going to simplify the numbers in the parentheses. And they came up with 22,000. 575, which I wrote down there. Multiply that amount by 15% because that amount is taxed at 15%, and I get 338625. I'll go ahead and add that to the tax for the lower brackets. And from here, I should get my federal tax due. So I'm going to add 892.50. And I'll get $4,278.75. That's how much I will have to pay for federal tax purposes. If we take the $4,278 and we add that to our Colorado, this is approximately $6,000 in taxes that I would have to pay on April 15th. 
unless of course I already had those amounts withheld from my paychecks. All right, let's look at this effective tax rate. What does that mean? Well, these are all marginal tax rates, 15, 25, 28, because these tax rates only apply in, within this margin. An effective tax rate is your tax rate for the whole entire amount of income overall, kind of like an average. In order to calculate it, all we have to do, so let's, let's calculate the effective tax rate here. So the effective rate is just going to be equal to the amount of tax that we owed, 4278.75, divided by our total income of 31,500. If we put that in our calculator, our effective tax rate is 0.1358, or written as a percentage, 13 point, I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, 13.6%. Now why is that? Because some of my income was taxed in this first bracket at 10%, and some of my income was taxed in that second bracket at 15%. So my effective rate is actually 13.6%. Overall, that is the average of what my income is taxed at. Let's look at one more example and then make a comparison to Colorado. Let's just say we were living in Nebraska and I wanted to calculate what my state income tax was here and then compare it to Colorado. So we'll go ahead and write a piecewise function then to define the functions and then we'll calculate our tax here. For our first piece, we are going to pay 2.46% or 0.0246% times our income, but between these intervals. So again, I'm going to write zero here and I'm going to write 2400 here and put my x in the middle. And then I just need to make sure that my signs are correct. So if taxable income is over, well over means greater than, but not over, so it has to be less than, but it can be equal to that bracket. Now if I look at the second one, I'm going to have to pay $59.04 plus I'm going to have to pay 3.51 percent written as a decimal is 0 0.0351 times my income and then it says of the excess over 2400 so I would subtract then the 2400 and then I can make my interval and my interval is 2400 so on this side I'm going to have the 2400 and on the other side I'm going to have the 17,500 and then I can just fill in my signs like this so we would continue on and I would need to write all three of these because my income is 31,500. Once we have written all of our piecewise functions and we've created our intervals, we can figure out which one would apply to the 31,500 right here. Well, it wouldn't be the first one because this only goes up to 2,400. It wouldn't be the second one or the third one. It has to be the last one. We use this one when our income is greater than 27,000, which it is. So I'm going to use the 1065 plus the 0 0.0684 times my income minus 27,000. Okay, all we have to do now is simplify. When I subtract these two, I get 4,500. And then when I put this in my calculator times 0 0.0684, I end up with $307.80. I add that then to the 1065, my taxes from the previous brackets, and I find out that if I lived in Nebraska, my state tax would come to $1,372.80. Okay, now let's go ahead and figure out what that marginal tax bracket is. See if you can guess perhaps what it is. We are taxed at all these rates. So what do you think it might be? Try to make a guess. Okay, when we actually calculate it, 
we'll see how close it is to your guess. So we took 137280 divided by 31500 and we got a decimal of 0 0.043581. Multiplying by 100 turns that into a percent. And as a percent, we can round to 4.4%. So that is our effective tax rate if we lived in the state of Nebraska. Was that close to your guess? We know that it has to be somewhat of an average and that four is right about in the middle. Now let's see how we fared compared to living in Colorado. So Nebraska is 1372.80. Living in Colorado on that same income, we pay a little bit more. So compare that to 1372.80. Nebraska is a little bit less than Colorado if that was our income. Even though, if we go back to the state of Nebraska, this rate here, the 6.8%, in addition to the 5.01%, is a higher marginal rate than Colorado. However, we make up for it when some of our income, in fact, $17,500 of our income, is taxed at a lower rate. All right, this concludes our lesson on modeling tax schedules using piecewise functions. So you should be able to write piecewise functions to model these different tax structures, as well as be able to find the effective tax rate for each situation.